heavy metal rock. Oh, oh my. electric experience yeah that one I was telling you about earlier the Ibanez um, Paul Stanley model that I got in 80 7980 had to be 80 um, I did I cut a lot of lawns I shoveled a lot of snow I raked a lot of leaves I was probably 15 16 17 and I saved all my money my friends were taking their quarters and putting it in video machines and I was taking mine and put it in the bank and then I bought that and I was like oh my god you know and I remember opening it up and my mom at the time goes oh my god that's some guitar so yeah I'm kicking myself for selling it, but... <laughs> so it's a pleasure to speak with you today for your new CD, Twas. Thank you so much for taking the time to speak to my global mind. Oh, no worries. I'm glad, uh, glad technology allows us to... Well, where are you? I'm in New Jersey. Oh, right on. Yeah. yeah. Kind of by um, Starland Ballroom, so to speak. Yeah. Yeah. Te technology allows us to speak without having to take the wagon train across the prairie. It's so cool, right? Yeah. I've just started getting used to Zoom, so uh, I'm still getting it all together. <laughs> so it's a pleasure to speak with you today. So tell me about the decision to do a Christmas CD. Well, first of all, it's, it's melodies. And uh, I've been really into melodies lately, because mm -hmm. I was scared of melodies for the longest time. You know, I, w I wanted to play like you know, chords to back up the singer, and then you know, some ferocious solo, and let the singer do the melody. Mm -hmm. And lately, I think one of the things is, is having to slide because you know I, I've got a magnet installed in my guitar, and that, and that wow. holds the, the chrome steel slide on there. And cool. Like, I can I can switch off between you know doing the shreddy stuff, you know, <laughs> and if I want that, I just get to learn the rest of the melody. But the uh, that was I, well, slide. And also, just playing slide actually helped my melody playing when I'm even when I'm not playing it. Yeah. Because then you end up just using your finger as a slide. You know, it's like a much more horizontal way of playing, and it's more the way a singer would sing. Yeah. So um, I've said that's my new hobby. Is like I, I, I go through all my favorite vocal melodies and try to get them on the guitar, and and Christmas is a great way to do that. That's true. Um, but also, it was really fun. Researching, because usually, like, if you're chopping in the mall and a Christmas song comes on, it's like, ah, this again, you know. Um, but to actually research and find the versions that are that are already out there, that I really like. And I tend to uh, the Nat King Cole stuff was so good. Yeah. His, his recordings, you know, it's, I don't know from the 40s or 50s, but it's it's this big orchestral arrangement with all these background vocals and you know really sophisticated music going yeah. on with with those arrangements. And so I was really digging those, and uh, and I found myself, you know, I was preparing for it starting in like about May, <laughs> and, and so by the time June and July came up, my head is just swimming in Christmas music, and I, I remember <laughs> just walking down the street and going like, I'm pretty sure, it, you know, it's, it's summer, you know, and, and I'm, I'm thinking like, I think I'm the only person with let it snow, let it snow, let it snow going on in, in my, my head, head right yeah, now. and. It, it was almost like a, re a rebellious feeling. Like, uh, <laughs> you know, it, that leads me up to my next question. You know, you did this so far in advance of the Christmas season. How did you get in the Christmas season to play with that that passion of the season? So, somehow, some, I, I think I enjoyed it more in the summer than I would have. Well, I, I don't know, but I think I'll, I, I'll be curious to see how these songs feel to me as we get, you know, yeah. close, as, as, you know, snow falls down and, you know, it, uh, you know, and all the decorations go up and, you know, you get close to that time. But uh, I, I, I just, it was a really nice uh, researching. I mean, every, every record I do, I research, you know, mm -hmm. I'll, I'll find music that I'm interested in and, and just sort of uh, warm up, you know, try to get fluent. With, with some element of music that I want to use as, as a tool. And in this mm -hmm. case, it was, it was the melodies. And uh, also, I, I knew that I was a little bit in over my head with, with the chords. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, I mean, it's a song like the Christmas song has always been something, because it's got two five ones in it. You know, okay. It's, 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 it's like a jazz stand. And I, I know what those are. And if, if, if I see them on a chart, I can, I can play them. But it's not, you know, that's, that's not where I came from. I'm, I, I'm rock and roll musician so you know a 251 is, is I'm a little scared of those 
then uh, yeah, there were th those, and, and of course some of the other songs have, have, have some genuinely sophisticated jazz things. So I hired two jazz musicians to play in the band, and I would invite them over, and, and I'd say, okay, I, I found this Nat King Cole arrangement, <laughs> I love it, and you know, I'll, I'll, I'll sit here and, and, and press play and pause, and you guys work out the chart. <laughs> and, 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 you know, I, there was something that I could probably do, but I had myself on a deadline, and I thought, what they can do in about 45 minutes would take me two days. Yeah, I get you. And I, I, would, still, I would love to, if I had the, if I had two days to spend, I, I, I would love to do it, because I'd, I'd love to educate myself and become better. But I want to. I got to get this record done. The record companies. <laughs> the record company told me I needed to finish it in July. Oh wow! They're like, they're like if, we, if we're going to press the vinyl, we need it in July. And I'm like, ah, oh, you know. So I ended up getting it too late in August, and they they've still managed to make the deadline. And Christmas is a hard deadline too. <laughs> it's not. It's not as effective on January second, right? <laughs> <laughs> That's the thing. Is like, with, 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 with another album, if you know, it gets pushed back a month, it's not right. a big deal. But for for Christmas, you know. You don't want to come out in February. <laughs> you got that one week opportunity to make it work. You know, um, I have to wonder how much of the songs were off the cuff and improvised while you were recording. Well, I, I was—I mean, I, we weren't very well. Like, the, I mean, none of us were very rehearsed. Okay. <laughs> Which is the, the good part of that is—is is like you, you're still kind of enjoying the song. You're not tired of listening to it. The, the bad part is like you know, you're, you're, it's 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 a really intense experience trying to get it right in the studio. Yeah. You know, those arrangements are pretty sophisticated. And uh, I remember like with, with "Let It Snow," I, I came up with the chords for that, and I was doing all kinds of you know, I had an augmented chord in there, you know, six chords and all these flash chords. And you know, I can't just play my rock and roll licks and have it work. I have to play over the changes. And so I, I really wasn't. I hadn't had time to really rehearse it to the point that I would have liked to. So the, the way I got around it is, you know, we played through the song enough to get like a really good version of the song. And then I said, okay, we got it. Now let's just run the solo part. Mm -hmm. You know, give me, give me four of those, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and then, and then I get, I said, and also give me about five minutes to practice before <laughs> do it. So I just, you know, went over it and like, okay, you know, let's run it four times. And, and then, you know, then once I got the good, uh, are you still there? Yeah, oh yeah, hope. I'm sorry, I hit the wrong button. My apologies. Yeah, I lost your video. There you go. Okay, sorry. Okay, sorry. I meant to hit the record button. I'm still new to Zoom. <laughs> I got an audio tape of it also. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I, I could run the solo a few times, get a good one, and then we, you know, edit that in. So, um, so occasionally I had to do that because, again, there was hardly any rehearsal. Um, but it was improvising. I mean, yeah, I mean, the, the, I would leave spots, but you know, mostly when you get the melody right, and we, uh, I would say, I mean, stuff like um, with, when we with Hark, uh, yeah, I mean, that, that's you know, that melody set. I don't want to mess with the melody too much, yeah. but but I wanted to have something in the middle, and and actually, I would go to Dan, the the, the guitar player, a lot, and say like, you know, how can we make this song longer? Because if I just play this the, the same melody three times with nothing else. You're kind of you're kind of tired of it, you know. It doesn't it doesn't go anywhere, so it can come come back. Right, and Dan right. was really good at at idea that he said like, well, let's do like a. And just jam over those two chords, and uh, and so suddenly we had a middle. And then when it returns to the melody, you're kind of happy to hear it again. Yeah. And uh, and so that you know, I, and it's is as simple as the two chords are. They're both major sevenths, and I. And so, so I, and I want to play the ninth to be cool. So you know, I had to, I had to work on that a bit. But I, you know, the, again, uh, and actually, I ended up playing way too long. So I, I edited it not to be good. I edited it to be shorter because I shorter, it, right? But I, 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 went, I went a bit long. I love what you did with Frosty the Snowman. It's like an emotional roller coaster. You start off fast. You start. It goes dark and ominous. It turns around to be happy, and then it ends off with a vibe of being strong and proud. What's the thought behind twisting that classic around like that? Well, the, the the songs that have a more sophisticated chord arrangement, you don't have to do much to them because they're already cool. Mm -hmm. um, you just you know you just you just you just copy Nat King Cole's orchestra and, and and you already got something cool to work with. But but songs like Rudolph or Frosty are are so simple. I mean, really, they, they, to me, they lend themselves to a punk rock arrangement because then they just you know you 
the, 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 the energy is different. So if yeah. you go, you know. <laughs> that's you know the, the my first my first idea would be that but i i kind of wanted you know i wanted to bring more sophistication to it somehow so I, I, the first thing i thought we'll, we'll change the melody to minor so uh, what, i can't remember what key i did that was it uh yeah i did I think i did it in g so instead of you know instead of major i went And just, you know, just, just every major note changes to minor. Wow. It sort, of gives, sort of gives us this ominous, serious, you know. Yes. <laughs> I, I, I loved it. I thought it was really cool. A bit of a mood today, you know. And then, and then I, I did want to take it back to major, but I still wanted to have something a little surprising. So we did a 7-8 group. And it was just funny. Um, uh, Jimmy, the drummer, you know, he's a blues drummer. He's played with Fabulous Thunderbirds. And he, he's never played 7-8 in his life. So like the, the day before we, cause we knew we were going to track it, you know, I, I forget which day, but the day before we knew we were going to track it the next day. And he's like, can, can you play the groove you want on the drums and I'll record it and I'll practice it overnight. Yeah. So I just sat down in the kit and it was like, you know, did my Neil Peart, you know, sort of Tom Sawyer, whatever. And, you know, he learned it and did it great. That's awesome. Uh, so, so that was the middle. And then, uh, you know, and then I wanted like a blues version. Yeah. So uh, you did like that. Right. Then, then, then I have to use the melody and kind of blues it out. But that was that was the hardest one. That one, you know, that's the one. That's the one I could probably use another take with. But Fro Frosty was was cool because that was one of the songs that was totally one take with no fixes. Wow. Uh, you know, I mean, the, 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 we did everything. I would never thought that. We did it, we did all songs live. A lot of times I would use, you know, the chorus from take seven and the verse from take two. And but Frosty's like all the way through one performance. That's pretty yeah. cool. And, and know, I, um, I, I didn't expect that. I thought, I thought we'd need a lot more work with that one. <laughs> no, I think it came out tremendous. That's my favorite one. Um, you touched a little bit upon this. What was the hardest song to change the approach? And which song lent itself to be the easiest to change the, the approach to it? I think uh, Rudolph really gave me. That was challenging to arrange it, um, yeah. but for the same reason as Frosty, it was, it was like it's so, the chords are so simple. Excuse me, that, um, that I had to figure out some some way to make it cool. And the uh, the first thing I did was just came up with a groove because I get. with that line so it's sort of it's syncopated and maybe there's a little bit of funk or reggae in there but you can also if you do it with a heavy sound it's, it's kind of yeah. cool there's yeah, some zeppelin to it and um but then the the real challenge was in the melody or no this is for the or, 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 and then it goes and i just couldn't bear no 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 you know there's just two bonehead you know, for for me, like like, and I, and I love a lot of bonehead stuff, but I thought like, I can't I can't play. <laughs> da, 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 da. So I, I thought I somehow I got to make that like angry. Yeah. And so what I did is I took the two notes and played them on one string, and then on the on the lower string, I, I put the same note, so I could kind of double up on it, and and that way I could. It's it's sort of the architecture of the lick allows me to do like sort of a Gary Moore. You know the way Gary would do like a, something like that, but I but I using the front of the uh, Rudolph notes. That'd be like you know, uh, uh, you know. so it just has a little bit of snarl, you know, angry dog. That's very creative, very clever too to come up with that. Kudos to you on that one. Yeah. And you also have two, um, two of your own songs on this one. Um, Every Christmas Has Love. How did that song come about? What made you add it to the CD? That, that was I, I just the melody popped in my head. And uh, I, I, I love a lot of the, the 70s uh, AM gold or yacht rock, mm -hmm. whatever you call it, that, that was on the radio when I was a kid. And a lot of this, you know, it's keyboard music, you know, it's written with guys that played piano. Or girls like Carol King, um, and uh, but I, but I, I, I've learned a lot on the guitar. So a lot of the, the changes, you know, having that chord of the seventies, you know, and then it, 
key it's in. To me, that's just like the most yacht rock chord. And, 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 uh, I like yacht rock. What's that? I like yacht rock. We always listen yeah, to yeah. it on Pandora. So, so that that that's it. Just sort of wrote itself, and um, yeah, that one. And, and I, again, with both those songs, I wrote wrote them around lyrics. So I, you know, wrote some lyrics, and that helped me to, to find the to find the melody, and then to play the melody. And uh, the the other one was kind of interesting. I, I used a three string guitar. The uh, down the chimney blues. With the, the uh, three strings for Christmas. And th this is a micro, which has a short neck, which makes it easy to play. Yeah. So the, the bottom neck has got the normal six string. So, uh, you know, that's like you do the melody. But the, the top neck has three strings. So they're tuned in octaves. And, and that way, you know, if you, if you stretch like a triad out, you can do it all in the same spot. So you, you know, you get these ferocious licks, and I, I discovered that if if you play only on the dots, then it it, it makes a uh, an A nine arpeggio. That's like the same, you know, as a as a James Brown chord. You get the, and so I did that lick. Only using the dots. Yeah. And then and put those together. And and that's you know, I had that lick and I thought I, I gotta write a song about the guitar. It's, 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 it's got three strings. I, I thought, you know, for Christmas I want the other three. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. That is an awesome song. I love it. You know, um, in the press release, they talked about um, that you got your first guitar at Christmas, but they didn't mention what guitar, what kind of guitar it was. Oh, it was a, a Les Paul Custom. Oh, really? Which is amazing. Um, it, I mean, that's, a, that's a pretty good first starter guitar. Yeah. Well, my, my first guitar was a, was a Stella acoustic, and I'd been playing that for a couple of years. Okay. And uh, that actually, it, it turned out to be a good starter guitar because it was a short scale. Um. And, and also, it's just nice to start with acoustic because you don't have to deal with knobs and feedback and all that stuff. Um, but I really wanted an electric, and I didn't know anything about electric guitars other than I, you know, I'd seen the Led Zeppelin movie and I knew Jimmy Page had a Gibson, but I didn't know what kind it was or anything. And uh, my uncle, was, you know, my one of my big guitar heroes, he he, he was visiting around Christmas time, and um, he looked through the local paper and just, you know, he's like, "Man, there's a, there's a Gibson Les Paul for for three hundred bucks." And so I, I had saved up 150 for mowing the lawn and, and, and birthdays and stuff. And uh, my parents said, well, you know, we'll, we can kick in the other half, but that's our whole budget, you know, yeah. for, 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 your, for Christmas. So, you know, you can't have any G.I. Joes or Legos <laughs> or, you know, Stretch Armstrong or, or you know, whatever. <laughs> you know, this is going to be your first Christmas with no toys. Yeah. It, and it's, it's up to you. You have to decide, you know, because you can either have, you know, a bunch of toys or the guitar and it, it, it kind of it was a it was a big decision it was like well, I, I kind of almost felt like it was a rite of passage into adulthood like yes, yes. You know, do I have the toy toy the kid toys or do I get this new kind of grown-up toy and I went I went for the Gibson you know so yeah <laughs> it, um, it was actually it was a hard guitar to play because it or well not not to play but a hard guitar to bend on because it was a fretless yes, wonder you know the, the real small frets on it and uh, but it looked cool and it sounded great, and and it was you know built well. So th that was that was amazing. And I, and I had no amp, so I, I plugged it into my cassette player and just cranked up the. the I remember the VU meters were like. Yes. <laughs> so it had a horrible buzzy distortion, but it was uh, you know it was exciting. It was you know, it, sound, it sounded electric. What color was it, and do you still have it? It was Sunburst, and uh, I don't have it, but I know where it is. I, I, I sold it to Mike Varney. Oh, okay. Yeah. He, we, we I needed to get to the studio to record the second Racer X album, and I, I didn't have a car. And and Mike said, "Well, sell me your Les Paul, and I'll and, I'll, and you could buy a car." And, and I was like, "Well, okay." You know, <laughs> I remember after that, I, you know, I tried to buy it back from him. He's like, "No way!" And I'm like, "Oh, come on, Mike!" You know, I was I was a starving musician. You know, but anyway, I, I have nothing but gratitude for what Mike did for my career. So I I, I think he earned it. <laughs> <laughs> 
It's a great story. Great story. Let's talk a little bit about your um, fireman guitar. So you said you took the idea from Paul. Did you create that idea or was that something that, you know, what made you flip it? It's kind of interesting. It's a cool well, I, guitar. Well, I'd learned how to use Photoshop a little bit. Yeah. And uh, I had, um, I, I was working with, uh, with, of course, I was working with Ibanez. And I, uh, um, my contact on Ibanez is a guy named Rob. And I, I had, uh, it was the year, the year 2000. And I, I had asked Rob to have the custom shop make me a 2000 light show guitar. So the body was in the shape of the number 2000 and it had a light, you know, a battery pack and it would light <laughs> up and blink. And it was for this big show I did at the Tokyo Dome with, uh, with all these TV stars in Japan. And, uh, so, you know, it was, it was a bit of work making that guitar, I think. And, you know, I just used it once and that was it. And so I, I had, I forget, I had an idea for something and I called up Rob and, and he, he goes like, can you just make something that's out of our, you know, a, a, like a shape that we already make, you know, <laughs> rather than like the number 2000. I could tell he was like a little exasperated from, from my <laughs> weird ideas. And so I said, afraid. Like, <laughs> I said like, I'll call you back. <laughs> and, I, and I thought about it. I thought, man, the Ice Man is so cool. But, you know, I, I, I don't know. For, for some reason, I, I, I felt like having that limitation, like, okay, you know, I have to do it. I, I, wanted, to, I wanted to mess with them somehow. So I, I had the idea of flipping it upside down. And then, of course, you need a cutaway. Yeah. So I, I, that's easy enough to do in Photoshop. And I just, you know, sort of built the thing you know, in, in, on the computer and then sent him the picture. And I thought, like, there's no way he's going to do this. And he's, he's like, yeah, we'll, we'll build one. It's pretty cool. And, and then when I got it, it, I mean, you know, they're a real guitar company, so they know how to like do things like put contours in and mm -hmm. you know and, and make the neck joint right and you know that stuff I didn't know how to do. And and the real instrument was great. I was like, man, I, I, it, it feels. I just sort of did it as a prank, but it, it turned out <laughs> it, it, it it really turned into a nice instrument. And then you know the next one they made was the Karina one, and that was you know. Yeah. amazing tone it's, it looked great so it, it really has turned out to be a, a, a nice instrument yeah it's a sharp guitar i like the colored ones i've seen you had like the blue one like a oh, yeah. blue. yeah that's that's one of my favorite ones of yours um i want to be respectful to your time so i got one more question for you um when you came up with the idea of using the drill on the guitar and then eddie van halen took it and for himself what was your take on that and um I, I would imagine it's kind of a big compliment in some ways too I, I I just thought I was dreaming. It, it, it just seemed it was so odd. I mean, again, like any contact with Eddie to me was was odd because he was such a hero and like sort of superhuman to me as as a kid. I mean, I, I saw you know every show from 1979 to, to 84 that I you know in, in in Pennsylvania, and I'm you know the kid in the audience with the binoculars <laughs> watching his fingers and. You know, he was just such a star to me. So to have any kind of association, I, I just felt like, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm speaking with a spirit from another world. <laughs> like this is yeah. it's Eddie Van Halen, you know, and, uh, and and I don't I don't think he I don't think I was on his radar. You know, I don't think he was like looking through a guitar magazine and going like, oh, Paul's using the drill. I'll use it, too. I, you know, I, I think he just had one in the studio. I was like, well, it makes a noise, you know. And uh -huh. so it was sort of just a, uh, you know, a, a coincidence, but a, but a pretty unusual one. And I, yeah, I was, that's I was, very cool. I was sh shocked and, you know, just, just couldn't believe that, that I could uh, be associated with the guy in any way. <laughs> that's an awesome story. That's an awesome story. Hey, one real quick one. You're working on a solo CD um, after the Christmas one or are uh, you taking a break? What's, what are you doing? I, I probably have an album's worth of stuff right now. I've just been, I've been playing a lot of drums. Really? And, uh, <laughs> And actually, from doing the Christmas album, I, I got a little better at engineering and Pro Tools, even though I, I wasn't the engineer. I would I would bring the tracks back, and and do the edits, and then and then bring it back to Jimmy, and, and then you know for him to mix. So because uh, it was just faster than than me doing it. You know, I, I could do it in the morning when I got up at five a.m. and, and have it ready. So yeah, keep yeah. things rolling along. So I I got a lot better at Pro Tools, and so at my home studio, I, it's just before sometimes I'd get bogged down doing everything. Because it's like, oh, how do you do this again? What button? But now I'm kind of fluent at it. So I've been doing all these demos where I play everything. And, and uh, it, it's really fun. A lot of times I just jam and, you know, not, not really any goal in mind other than having fun. Yeah. And it's, it's funny how good that, that turns out. Sure. 
I get it. I get it. Well, listen, I want to thank you so much for your time. It was such an honor to speak with you today and playing guitar for me. So that was awesome. So thank you so much. I really appreciate right it. Well, thank you. Rock and roll. Heavy metal rock. rock. Oh, my. Oh, my.